video is awful. Uh, good evening, dear watchers, and especially subscribers. Maybe some of you <laughs> missed me, but not anymore because today I am streaming a contest for the horses round eight eight seven division one. This is quite important for me because it's my first stream since maybe January or something like this. But today the boss is over. Let's check that everything compiles. I can even create multi-tester. Something like this. And soft test will read N. Let's check that it compiles. Of course it does. Of course it does. So we have two minutes left. Let's also check that we can draw. Indeed we can. It's so nice that I have like a graphics tablet, I don't know how it's in English, thing that allows me to do it. Uh, because I can draw pictures and write something not in my notebook, but on the computer itself. So it is meaningful to make a screencast so you see my thoughts on everything. Because if I wrote it in paper on, on paper it would be non not meaningful like for example umnik he just sits in front of computer solves problems and you cannot see his thoughts during the rating contest rated during unrated contest i guess he explains some something I'll put it here. I hope it is uh, loud enough. So you hear me. Well, I don't know if it was important. But I also turned on the sound. Okay, we are fully prepared. Can already make this, I guess. Yes, I can. Okay. Oh no, English. Ntarsis set. Okay. Hmm. Ah. What? It's a hard problem, isn't it? So first of all, let's sort them. So if A1 is not 1, then answer is 1. But what if A1 is 1? In this case, we always extract the minimum. Like what? Uh, what?
Okay, for example, I don't quite understand what's going on. So the answer is at most. So for example, a1 equals 1, a2 equals 2, etc. ak equals k, but ak plus 1 is greater than k plus 1. So after the first operation, the answer is k plus 1. But what happens after the next operation? After the next operation, something strange happens. Both n and k are at most What? It is a hard problem. This is a hard problem. Did someone solve it? Yes. What? The probability is zero. Oh, I don't get it. I don't get it. <clears throat> okay, after the first operation, okay, let's not use k, m. For the, after the first operation, it's m plus 1. But after the second operation, it's nonsense. It's pure nonsense. Okay, we can safely say that the answer is at least... Is at least what? Uh, M, K, plus 1. The answer is at least M, K, plus 1. And sometimes it is M, K, plus 1. For example, if uh, this is the last element. But sometimes it is not M, K, plus 1. What can we do about it? You really cannot solve this problem. What's happening? Maybe I should just stop? <laughs> What's happening? This problem is insane. Maybe we should solve A. Okay, B. Problem B. It is imbalanced if it satisfies the following. 
all numbers are between minus n and n and non-zero. Also no two indices such that the sum of these numbers are, is zero. And for each i, there are exactly a i indices such that bi plus bj is greater than zero. Okay, this is a nicer problem. So the fact that bi plus bj is not zero means that uh, there are exactly one number from this set, exactly one number from this set, etc. And, and exactly one number from this set. So all we need is to understand which choices we make. And I think we need to start from the center. We need to start from the center. For example, There are exactly AI indices J such that AI plus BJ is greater than zero. So, for example, there should be a number N ah, greater than zero. Greater than zero. So, if there is a number N, this means that we chose one because we needed to oh no no yeah okay okay i guess we will start from the bottom so if we see the number n this means that we chose here n because n sums with any of these numbers to a positive number but if here is a minus n then there is no uh, no number n in the output okay after that after we know about this n let's look what is chosen here yeah because if we see n we actually need to subtract one from all other numbers Yes, it's kind of solvable. So this problem, I like this problem because I can solve it. And the previous one is unsolvable. Okay, we make a vector of size n. We read it. Uh, and we... We kind of need to sort it. Okay, so like VPII W of size N. And we say that VI equals VII. No, I think we even need to make a set. Okay, we need a set, and we emplace there, uh, or not a set, maybe, a... no, a vector is a key, actually, vector, deck, deck, deck is, uh, the best, so we push back, uh, the i, and i, now, we sort, whole w, We store which number we subtract, and we go n times. Also, we need vi ounce of size n. So we do the following: we look at the maximum number. Yeah, we look at the at the maximum number. So if v dot back dot x 
dot x uh, minus two subtract uh, equals n minus i. This means that in pair n minus i or minus n minus i, we chose the positive number. So we say that ans v back dot y equals uh, n minus i. And after that, we need to say that we shrink everything. So plus plus to subtract. And we dot pop back. Else, we also need to check that maybe a uh, front number is zero. Yeah, in this case, we all we say that ans v dot front dot y equals minus n minus i. We do not subtract everything, and we pop front. And otherwise we say that it is impossible yes we say no and we return from here and if everything worked fine we say that it is yes why is it so strange okay we say yes and we Print the array. So south ans i and new line in the end. So here we need to copy paste this. Actually, the answer is always unique, so we need just to compare these strings. No, it failed. Why did it fail? What is it, is it expecting? Ah, it's it, it was the wrong file. It happens. It happens. It's sad that I spent time on this, but it was the wrong, the, the wrong file. Okay, yes, one. No, yes, minus three, one, two. Yes, four, two, minus one, minus three. Yes, minus one, three, minus one. Why is it here? Oh no, I was wrong, I was wrong. Actually, it's not. Hmm. I was wrong. I was totally wrong because it can be, the numbers can be from same set, actually. For example, minus one and again minus one. But maybe in this case we can like expand it so if we have minus one and again minus one can we just move all these numbers down and make it minus one at minus two or can't we i guess we can it it doesn't change anything yeah we can just expand it okay i think i think it is okay i think it is fine I solved the problem incorrectly, but actually now the solution is totally fine. Let's submit. So now I will lose racing actually, because the problem A is still impossible in my view.
also I will get wrong answer test 1 or test 2 or I will not. Okay, problem C. It's so laggy. To prepare a Takodachi, Dumbo, no. There are n octopuses on a single. Actually, isn't it octopi? Everything is laggy. N octopuses? Numbered 1, 2, etc. N. The eighth octopus? Has a certain initial health value AI. Each boulder crushes consecutive octopuses when this is LR. You can choose the numbers L and R arbitrarily for each boulder. So we need to regenerate all the octopuses. Is it what we need to do? So what we can do is we can take a subsegment. It, it is a standard thing. We just we can just uh, look at this as so we have several octopuses. So we can subtract one from a segment. Yeah, we can just look at the differences. So these differences, uh, this difference is added one, and this difference, this difference is subtracted one, and this difference is added one. Yeah, and in the beginning, and in the beginning we have like zero. Yeah, so the first number is zero actually. Okay, let's assume that the first number is k, and we want all number numbers to be k. So we are working modular. We are working modular. Modular k, yeah. Or or zero, it's it's anything. So we can so we have an array of numbers, and we are able to. Subtract one from some number and add one to some other number. And what we need to do is to make all differences all differences zero. This is what we need to do. Okay, so actually we have several numbers whose sum is divisible by k. And we need to choose some of them which we will decrement and some of which we will increment. And we need to make all of them divisible by k. Actually, we just need to... Like... Hmm. We need to go from both ends and do it greedily. So we read N and K and then we read A. Then we Sort it. Oh, yeah. Yes. No. I don't want it. We do not do it. We... Firstly, we make differences. Yeah? We make differences. This is what we do. 
for int e equals zero i this then plus plus i something like this so if a i equals k a i equals zero then we say that d i equals a i and if i then d i we subtract a i minus one from it modular k excellent and only then we sort d d is what we are working with okay we like consider two pointers hmm okay it will be long long some left and some right which are both zero initially okay and we go through this array also we consider two uh pointers here r equals n and while r is greater than l we do something so what do we do we say that if some left is at least some right we say that some left plus equals uh, some left plus equals just a moment it's plus equals d l and l is increased otherwise sum right plus equals d r but not d r but rather i guess minus d r Oh, okay, and in the end we return some left. Okay. It's kind of strange, does it always work? Okay, check by submit. Because I cannot really understand it right now. It says 6 and 10. Is it true? No, 2 and 4. Why? I need to make all of them 3. And how can I do it? Ah, I can... What? Ah, I don't understand something. I really don't understand something. I cannot actually make the segment too big. So, like, I cannot subtract one. So what I can do, I can subtract one from the left number and add one to the right number. I cannot do it uh, after sorting. Yeah? I can't understand something. I really cannot understand something. So we have several numbers. Yeah, a1, etc., an. What we need to do is to make all of them 
0 modulo k. And we can subtract 1 from some left number and add 1 to some right number. Okay, first of all, it is it obviously, obviously means that we need to make a 1 0 by subtracting. Yeah, it's clear. But what then? The problems are somewhat hard. The problems are hard. So, we have N. Can I use black color? No, again? Again? No, I can't use black color. So, N numbers, we can subtract 1 from left number and add 1 to right number. And this happens modulo K. And we need to make all numbers zeros. Yeah, first of all, I think it means that I think it means that we do not consider overlapping segments because if I did minus one plus one minus one plus one. I could as well make them non-overlapping, uh, but like nested. So it should be nested, actually. The optimal answer can be nested. Yes. So if it is nested, Hmm. Also, I think I never want to make minus one and plus one to the same number because this means I could uh, destroy these operations and make it one operation. Yeah, so each number is actually only a plus number or, or minus number. Only one of these. So, what then? Then actually, and I need to minimize the sum of the sum of plus numbers and minus numbers should be zero. And I need to minimize it. This is quite a complex problem. Why is it on, on place C? This is a really hard problem. Hey, people, what's going on? Also, problem A is impossible to solve. Okay, let's continue this wonderful journey. So, I need to make this like parenthesis sequence, correct parenthesis sequence, I don't know, proper, proper sequence of uh, brackets such that the sum of opening right it not, no, hmm. Okay, maybe again greedily, so the first one is obviously opening, because I cannot close it. Yeah, now I need to decide whether it will be opening or closing. And it is, I think I cannot do it immediately. So maybe I will want it to be opening, maybe I, I will want it to be closing. Or not.
Actually, I think there is a range. There is a range of what I can have in the end. There is quite a range. So, for example, assume that I have read some subsegment. Yeah, I can have any sum like a, a minus s, etc. to the zero. And look at the next bracket. If it is opening, <coughs> I can add this number to any of these uh, numbers. But if it is closing, I don't understand it at all. So, <clears throat> let's assume that k equals, for example, 5. Then in case of 1, 4, the answer is 1, because I can subtract 1 and add 1. But if it is 4, 1, then the answer is 4, because I need to subtract 4 and add, and add 4 here. So what am I actually looking at? Yes, so the sum can be any of these numbers. Mm. So I want to find the minimum sum of opening brackets, which I had. I want to find the minimum sum of opening brackets. So for example, for each of these numbers, I also know the sum of opening brackets. Yes, so what? So what? Yeah, because actually... For example, if I have 2, 2, 0, and the k is 4, I can either do these operations or do these operations. And here there are 4 operations, here there are 2 operations. So this is completely different stories. These, these are completely different stories. Actually, I know the sum of all numbers. Hmm. But then, what about 0 and then 1, 4, and 0 and 4, 1? For example, what happens here? Is it somewhat different? I guess it is not. I still need. So this zero this doesn't help me in, in any way. And this zero also doesn't help me. Actually, all that I can do is I can move once from right to the left. And I need to find the minimum number of ones that is needed to do it. Oh, this is not nice. This is really not nice. Or, okay, this is, no, maybe this is nice. Maybe this is nice.
or not or this isn't okay can i make all segments starting with this number i guess no because it is inefficient yeah for example here i can make this but it is very bad no i i i i can but i cannot and this is a bad decision also always using the first number may be a bad, might, might be a bad decision Okay, can I do it greedily? Like, for example, the first number is 1. I definitely need to subtract 1 and add 1 somewhere else. Somewhere else. So can I just add it to the next number? And then I can say that I can... Uh, skip one, one operation and don't use it. Because it is already uh, spent. Maybe I can. Moreover, like, I assume that I have, like, one and some number, x. Yeah, so if x is less than k minus 1, I can actually just transfer it here. This doesn't uh, change anything. But what if... Uh, also, if I have a and b, and a plus b is less than k, I can just transfer all this number here. But what if a plus b is at least k? For example, if a plus b is k, can I just say that I need to destroy them both? Or not? Because maybe not. Maybe it, it, is, it is a bad decision. Sometimes it might be a bad decision because... Like, for example, if I have 4, 1, 4, 1, what I really want to do is I want to make these four operations and one such operation. But if I do it greedily, I will spend all iterations here and then all iterations here. And this is non inefficient. Okay, maybe I can solve something something else because this is again a hard problem. Also, this is just not funny. Uh, this problem A is ridiculous. Okay. 
So actually, we all we need to do is we need to ch choose some numbers. We need to choose some numbers. Subtract k from them. Yeah, and now... The sum on each prefix, or maybe not even k, maybe even more than k. So, can it be that I want to subtract more than k? For example, I have 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, etc., 1, and some number. Can I want to subtract more than uh, many, many times 1? So, like, it makes more than one cycle. I guess this is strange. Because, look, if I made a whole cycle, I could do it with some other number. Yeah? I could do it with some, no with some other number. Does it make sense? So, like, I have several operations. And all of them resulted in nothing. I could just shift it here. Yeah? So actually, I always need to subtract all at most k. So I need to subtract k from some numbers so that all prefixes are non negative. And then I need to minimize the sum. Of positive numbers. So I need to maximize the number of minus k's. Yeah, I need to maximize the number of minus k's provided that some of all prefixes are non negative. Does it make sense or, or not? So what is the sum of positive numbers? Like, I chose some... No, no, it's not true. I... Not only do I need to subtract many k's, I also need to choose the numbers from which I subtract k's. No, this is not good. This ain't good. So let's do it again greedily. I go through my numbers one by one. And at some moment I see that their sum is at least k. What do I need to do? I need at some moment to subtract k. But do I need to do it immediately here? Maybe not. Maybe not, because... Maybe the next number is a better candidate. Yeah, so actually what I need to do... Is I need to subtract k it from the maximum number among these yeah so when i have at least k i need to, to choose the maximum number and subtract k from it <sighs> okay but what next So actually, I can assume that I always use the maximum number. Yeah. So in in this in this segment, I always can uh, use the maximum number because if I didn't use it, I can move something. Yeah. So if there is a number here, I can definitely move it to the right, and if 
if all numbers are here, then I can definitely move to the left. Yes, so I can. I can do it. So I go through numbers one by one and I subtract k. And what I want is I want all the sums that will occur from now on that they are non negative. So I need some sort of segment tree which can find the minimum, the leftmost minimum from the, of, of the array. I need some segment tree which can find the leftmost minimum of an array. Oh no, I really don't want to write it. Hmm. Maybe I can do it without it. So, like, assume the number is like SK, the sum is SK, then I can S times subtract K, okay? And I need to do it in such a way that uh, it totally broke. I need to do it in such a way. Okay, this cannot be fixed. I do it in such a way that here I have at least one element, here I have at least one element, here I have at least one element, etc. I think I can do it from the right. I think I can do it from the right. Oh man. This problem ain't good. Ain't good problem. So I don't sort this D. Instead I do something much worse. Also, I kinda... Wait a second. Yeah, I kinda need to be it to be n plus one. Yeah, so like d n equals minus a n. Okay, now it is correct. So I have an array d of size n plus one, and I need Let's first define it sum. <laughs> sum plus equals i. And we can just divide it by k because it is divisible by k. So now we have number sum, which is the number of times we need to subtract k. And we do it from the end. Or, or, or not. We can say that int positives equals For example, positive numbers should be on the other side minimum possible numbers.
No, let's do it from the end because I don't understand it from the beginning. Okay, so I go from the end to the beginning and I look at the numbers. Yes, so I have several numbers. I have several numbers. I keep their sum. Yeah, I keep their sum in my mind. Yeah, and I say, what if I don't do anything? Yeah, so I have some numbers with some S, and I didn't subtract K. So I have sub subtracted K only D times. This means that I will subtract it like sum minus D times here. And this might be a problem because this might be a problem because sum minus d k so like let it be left sum sl minus this can be negative and this is a problem we cannot afford this so like and this is uh, let it be sr so s minus sr minus sum minus d k if it is less than zero that i need to do something Okay. Okay. We store SR equals zero. So we say that SR equals uh, DI. We add a DI. So now it is SR. So if now SL minus this is a negative, this means that let, let's let's keep also D. Keep track of subtracts. It will be subtracts. So if the number of subtracts is too little, that is, if S minus SR minus sum min minus D, like sum minus subs, If it is negative, this means that we need to do something. And what we need to do is we need to subtract k from the maximum number here. So in order to do it, we need a multiset of int. Or even priority q. Of ints. And at any moment we put di there. Okay, and in this case we need to pop the maximum number from q. We say q dot pop and plus plus subs. Excellent. What if... Nah. It's fine. It's fine. I guess it's fine. So, in the end, the numbers that are in the priority queue are just positive numbers, and I need to 
add them. So while q dot size uh, ants plus equals q dot top and q dot pop. Okay. Sounds good. No, it hasn't. Two four, two four, two four. Ah, two four. Guys, it's two four. Guys, it's two four. But this is such a bad solution that I am afraid it will fail system test. So I need to make some tests. Okay, let's let's make some tests. For example, one one four four. What does it say? Say four five. I think it will say that two. Four? Why four? Why four? Make one and two. What's wrong? Ah, it's it should be differences. It should be differences. Like one, two, one, five. It should be two. Okay. But what if differences are one four one four? Okay, this is this means that I have like one five one five. In this case, also true. Okay, what about four one four one? Yeah, in this case, because I need to make four five four five. It should say five. Yes. And what about four four one one? In this case, it should be eight. Four three four five. It should be eight. Well, again five? Why? How can it do? Okay, he can it can do three five. Then ah three five. Then it can do five two and then some some something here there. Okay, let's try. It's a total failure, but let's try. Oh, guys, guys, it's madness. Why didn't I solve problem A in the first place? Guys. It's a hard contest. It's a hard contest. Okay, we have a string. Let's clear everything. We have a string of like zeros and ones, okay. And we need to we we already know the number of differing pairs here. We can subtract it from k and we get some number k prime. So k prime should be the sum of differences in these things and these things. Uh, let's find the minimum and maximum number which are possible. The minimum and the maximum number which are possible. So actually... Actually, minimum and maximum numbers which are possible. Okay, for example, if I have one and one, yeah, I cannot do much because 
Well, in this square there will be at most two differences. I cannot make three. Okay. I cannot make three of them. So if there are too many of them, it's not possible. So I need to print my answer here. This is not nice again. But okay. Uh, it's it's fine, it's fine. Okay, what I always can do is I can just make uh, opposite numbers. I can always make just pos opposite numbers, and I think this is optimal maximum answer. This is optimal maximum answer. Because what is the answer? The answer is just what I had here, like k, what I have here twice and plus n. I think it is the optimum. Why? Well, I need to minimize the number of equal numbers, okay? I need to minimize the number of equal numbers. But what is the number of equal numbers? Okay, here it is like... So my answer is... Two, three n minus two, minus two s plus n equals two n minus two minus two s. So this is my answer of number of equal numbers, and we already have I don't know. Is it true that I need to? Reverse the string, and this is the optimum. And this is the optimum. <clears throat> How long is the contest actually? Hey, it's like two and a half hours, I think. We have spent sixty-eight minutes. Or 65. Okay, I need, I think we can use induction. So, assume that there are u equal pairs here. I say that the number of equal pairs will be at least 2u. Let's prove it. Let's consider this table. Let's find two different numbers. Let's split the uh, this place as follows. Then here, here the u prime and here u prime prime equal pairs. So there will be at least two u prime and at least two u prime prime here. And we sum them up. What if it is monochronic? If it is monochronic, then actually I cannot do it. But in this case, it is just the number of differences, uh, number of equalities. What is the minimum number of equalities actually? It is like n minus 1 plus number of zeros plus number of qualities in the bottom. And I want to say that it is at least 2n minus 2. So I need to say that it is at least n minus 1. So number of zeros plus number of qualities is at least n minus 1. Why is it? So I want to say that the number of 
So this is n minus 1 minus i inequalities. I want to say that it is at least n minus 1. So I want to say that z minus number of inequalities is at most zero, is at least zero. It's not true because I can use one zero one. So in this case, I'm wrong. Yeah, because I have one, two, three, four inequalities. And here I have three inequalities. Oh my. Oh my, so. So it's not true. It's not true. I can't explain why, but it is not true. <clears throat> why are these problems such So strange problems, guys. These problems are very strange. These problems are really very strange. What else can I say? Okay, okay. We still need to go to differences. We need to go to differences. Let's look at the differences. The differences is... The differences are like two arrays of size n minus one. And one array of size n. And one array of size n. I hate it. And one array of size n such that these sums are like zeros. Like, yeah, what I want to say is that if I go here or here, it's it's the same. So, like, any for cycle is, it, it has zero sum. Also, I already know all these numbers. So, I need to choose these numbers so that there are a maximum number of ones. Okay. So, I have an array, and I know that this number is sum of these two plus constant. And this is plus, also plus constant c2, etc. plus constant cn. And I need to choose these numbers such that this sum is maximized plus this sum. 
So if I always use once, it can it, it can be bad because sometimes I can use zero and this all these both numbers can uh, become ones. So it's not very nice to use all ones in the first place. But what can I do then? And how can I vary? So if I found a bigger sum and a smaller sum, then I can make any sum in between by altering these numbers. This is easy. This is really easy. I can even uh, begin to uh, write a solution. Okay, so I read n, k, and s. Oh uh, no. String S. String S. I read them. Then I need to find what do I need to find? I need to find uh mean ans equals find ans of okay first of all i need to find the differences so it's like vi diff zero of size l minus one and diff zero i equals si not equal si plus one now I say that this is div zero find on div zero minimum and max sans equals find ans of div one uh, div zero and one. So if mean ans dot first dot y is less is greater than k or max ans dot y is less than k then i say that it is impossible and i print no return so now i say that it is yes and while mean ans dot before equals one plus plus i. So what I say, I say that if mean ans dot y equals k, I break. Else I change this mean ans, and then I construct the second string. String ans of size e equals s now i go through the mean ans so if mean ans i i say that i need to change s So if ans i equals a, ans i equals b, else ans i equals a. Then in the end I print ans. So now all I need to do is I need to print, write the function find ans which finds the minimum or the maximum answer okay let's think again of this 
Maybe this is some sort of DP? Yeah, this is some sort of DP, actually. So what do I need to consider? I have several differences. So, so actually, I need to construct some array a1, a2, etc. a okay, a0 and y, etc. a n minus 1. And I know that bi is b is a i plus a r plus 1 plus d i. Of course, mod 2. And I need to minimize or maximize the sum. So for each prefix, I need to find the minimum and the maximum sum. Okay. Okay. We construct two vectors or like dynamics of size two of size okay const int n equals g dot size plus one of size n plus 1, I guess, or n. Okay, n. n is okay. So, what does it say? It says the minimum or the maximum answer. Like this. Okay. <clears throat> and in the beginning, I say that if I end with zero, I have zero sum. And if I begin with one, I have one sum. Then I go through one to n. And I say, what do I say? I iterate over the last number. Yeah, so... So, this has D's, and these are A's, and this has, these are B's. So now I have I'th number A. I want to calculate it. So if it is zero, also I need to iterate over this number. So this is like, this value is j and this value is k. Let's iterate over them. Okay, let's also make int infinity. So if I maximize, then I need to make it very little. And if I try to minimize things, I want it to be big. So here I have infinity. Fine. Now I say that dp ji is Okay, 
I say that int new ant is what? I say that I try to use k here. So I use gp of k i. Also, I add int of bool int of what? of k and j and oh man div i minus one i guess i don't even need to make int i just use parentheses so this is this number, uh, this number, and also I add j, plus j. So yes, if mx equals new ans is greater than actual current dp, which is dpij, no, which is dpji. So for example, if I'm maximizing that I want, then I want the new ANS to be greater than dpji. Then I say that new ANS, dpji, точнее, dpji equals new ANS. Okay. No, here I need to use zeros. Fine. In the, in the end, I need to construct the ANS. Pair vi int ans ans dot x dot resize n minus one ans dot y equals what? What is the number of differences? The number of differences actually I need to calculate this number of differences. Ants dot y equals zero for int e equals zero e less than n minus one. Ants dot y plus equals div i is not actually it's just the sum of div divs. It's just sum of the divs. Okay. Yes. Now I need to add. I guess dp so if so int last state equals last a int last state equals so if a mix then i need last dp be greater than second the last dp okay so assuming that i'm maximizing something then if dp1 is greater than dp0 then last state will be one okay last state is this Actually, I just say that no, this thing should return the middle array, not the last array. So it should be n. So ans dot x n minus first equals last state. Then we go through 
all these eyes. And what do we say here? Oh, we say that... Uh, again, A, D, B. Assuming that we know this number. And we want, for example, to maximize. Then we choose this number such that the answer is just what we need here. Yeah, so we say that if ans dot uh, if the, the sh dp zero if dp one i plus one sor div i sor ans dot x i plus first plus ans dot x i plus first They are equal to dp ans dot x i plus first i plus first then ans dot x i equals one. Excellent. This is what I love. This is what I love. <laughs> Okay. This is fail. This is failure. No, 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 no. Yes. This is this is great. Okay, let's look into this. Actually, I want some smaller tests like one, 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 a. What does it say? This says no, of course. But why? Let's look. Okay, actually, uh, there are absolutely no divs. And then we need to find minimum answer and maximum answer. Minimum answer is zero. And maximum answer is also zero. This is not true. For example, I want to minimize it here. If I want to minimize it, no, 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 no. I want to maximize it. Yeah. It is already one. How can it be zero if it is already one? Okay. If dp. Ah, also I need to say that ans.y plus equals dp last state n minus 1. Yeah. No. Why a? It should be b. It should be b. Okay. This means that I messed up here. Ah, because I didn't do anything here. Yeah, of course. So here I need to say that I sometimes need to change my minus. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so like I have some divs here and some b's here and some minans here so i have some number here and i change it 
Yeah, for example, it was zero, and, and now it is one. This manipulates with these two numbers. So first of all, this change should be registered. So like old value equals mean ans dot x i int new value equals one minus old value. Now I say that mean ans dot y minus equals old value. And mean ans dot y plus equals new value. Also, I need to do something with these two numbers. How do I do it? So if i is greater than zero, if i is greater than zero, then mean ans dot y minus equals XOR of the values. Old value sor div zero of i minus one sor min ans dot x i minus one and plus equals the same but with new value and also if i is less than n minus one and min ans dot y minus equals old value xor div zero i and minus plus one and also plus one i and new value and also i do this this Excellent. Okay, let's try again and see what happens here. Again, four times no. Maybe let's try something else. For example, one, one, zero, a. What does it say? Yes, a. Okay, for one, he solves it correctly. Let's try two zero a a. No, it cannot make zero different pairs. This is sad because this is quite easy to do zero different pairs. It says here an infinity. I cannot like it. KTP zero and one. Fine. So here I say that why so much? No, it should be I minus one because it should be I minus one. Yeah, it should be i minus one. It again. Ah, now it says yes. Let's try one. Can it do one? I think no, because it is contradicting with parity. Yes, it says one here. Ah, it should be the same parity. Okay, or. Or something like this. Yeah, because the parity is actually fixed. We cannot change it. So now it says no. What is what about two? Yes, it says B A. And three it says no. And four it says no. Ah, of course. What about A, B? Can it do something in this case? Yes, it says B, A. 3, and it says no. 2, and it should say something like 
AA or AB. Yes, it says AA to one and it should say no. And actually zero, it should also say no. Okay, now we again go to these tests and we see again some everything is incorrect. Just everything is incorrect. How does it happen? Why always no? Okay, let's look into this. Maybe I cannot understand something. Why is it ABAB possible? Ah, it's not possible. Okay, it says that I need BBBB. Do I understand that it is? One, two, three, four, five. It's definitely less than this, yes. Okay, let's look into this particular test. It shouldn't be that big. Okay, minimum months. <clears throat> is 5 and maximum months is 10. Why is it 10? Okay, differences. Let's see, dp0. And dp1. And we want to maximize it. Is parity actually not fixed? Yes, it is not fixed. I can choose one letter and change three digits. Oh my god. I'm out of I'm out of my mind. So actually, sometimes I can choose all three letters. And this is, this is, this is ridiculously bad. Okay. okay, let's look into this. Assume that we have two answers, minimum one and maximum one. Okay, so this is the initial, initial string. This is minimum answer and this is maximum answer. And we divided it and here we chose minimum answer and here we chose maximum answer. So, so what? I don't know what. Each time when we add a new column, we change several 
we change this one, this one, and this one. This is what we change. Three things. Oh my god. So when we are near the answer, we can actually uh, accidentally ruin everything. We can accidentally ruin everything because, like, it is monochromic, and we add three or subtract three, like a a a b, and we change it to b. Can we avoid it? Or it is hard to do? This is hard to do. For example, if we have something like A, B, A, B, always say B. And here we have B, A, B, A, etc., B, A. Then the optimum is. 3n minus 2. But can we do 3n minus 3? I think no. Because to do 3n minus 3, like one thing should be wrong. Only one thing should be wrong. Like if it is vertical, then we are already doomed. And we, if it is horizontal, then it is also vertical. Yeah, if there is at least one horizontal change, then it is also vertical. So sometimes it is impossible even if it is between two answers. It is somehow very bad. It is very bad. Oh man. Oh man. What can I do? So is it is this problem more constructive than I thought? Do people solve it uh, a lot? No, but still, oh man, what a disgusting problem. Yes, this is actually that example where I have ABAB, -A -B. yeah, and answer 10 is possible, but answer 9 is not. Maybe. This is the only uh, exclusion, yeah, the only exclusion. Also, the exclusion is where there are only two things. Okay. Okay. Let's think. Let's think.
let's think a bit. Okay, so we have some sort of answer. And we jump plus 3 or minus 3. Or plus 1 or minus 1. So if we jump into right into the answer, we are happy. But sometimes we just jump it over one extra one. Uh, one extra unit. Yeah, so if we have some numbers with difference 3 and 1 is greater than ANS and 1 is less than ANS then some of these two differences is just 1 what can we do then? yes, yeah, so, so we have some sort of answer and we want to add 1 to this answer can we do it? so if we want to add 1 we want to find a position A such that there are like one A and two Bs. But what if there is no such position? Yeah, in every position, like there are three Bs or there are three A's. Can it be? Well, it shouldn't, but can it be? For example, if we have two equal letters in the upper string, okay, the problem is in the bottom string there might be two Bs or something like that. And here, okay, we start with the little answer and we go to the big answer and we want to add one we just want to add one so we want it to be b here so we go to a and we added one So we have some minimum answer and some maximum answer. And we want to jump one by one, not more. Can we do it? So when we do it in the... Uh, some in the corner, like in the... Uh, on the on the edge of this array, it can be either plus zero or plus minus two. Yeah, for example, the, here is a, here is b, here is also a. Then it doesn't matter what is there. You can change it. Can we do some random? Because I don't like it. Or we cannot. So we have some current state 
and we just need to add one. We would like to add, if we want to add two, well, we can firstly check the corners. And if we have checked the corners, For example, if we want to add two, it is great for us if there is like A, A, A. So if it doesn't work, then there are actually like not something like this. First of all, it can be A, A and B. Yeah. In this case, we cannot add two. What's the problem now? The problem now is that any action just adds three yeah so it is equal to our target string except some places where it just adds three and we don't want it to add three what can we do then we just don't need to get into this situation in the first place Oh, also, if can it be can the answer be exactly like zero or one? Can it be one? Okay, maybe it is good when we have two A's like this in the beginning string. Why? Because for example, if we have two B's here, we can just make A and we change only one thing. Okay. We can change any of them and change the answer by one, but in the wrong direction. Okay, I guess the answer is like, if we have string like only, oh, I don't know. Okay, if we have only A's or only B's, then the answer just either zero or at least two. Yeah, it can be any number, at least two, I guess. It can be any number, at least two. But at most, n. 
And also Sierra. I don't have my, much time left. I need to do it fast. Okay, yeah, let's just make some uh some sort of stress. Avoid stress. What does it do? It N. We go through all strings. We construct the other string. And what do we do here? We say that ans dot insert Top count of of what? Of I and something like this, yeah. Also, plus same thing for, for J. And plus built in top count of X or J. And in the end, we want to find minimum and maximum. Ans.in int mx equals ans.r begin. And if mx is not mn, or int equals 0 e less than n, e out
i and i to j and one Okay, and I need to make stresses for all numbers from 1 to 5. Let's look at these stresses. What's wrong? What for for this string also that something strange is true. Ah, I should say that does not equal mx minus mn plus one is not equal and dot size. Yeah, but what's this? For this, for example, 10 is not possible. What? What? Huh? So, for example, does it mean that Uh, for one zero one zero one zero one zero one, there is an answer. Yeah, like okay. For example, one zero one. Ah, zero zero zero. One two three four. And I expected that the only answer is one two three. One. One two three four five six seven. So is six possible? Is six possible? Or not? Six is not possible. Why is six possible? For one zero zero one zero, for example. <clears throat> so n n equals three, i equals two. It should be possible to use I ah, should be N okay. okay now we see the obvious pattern that the only bad number is alternating number. So what about seven at least it's possible? Yeah. Yeah, we see the pattern clearly. So, what can we do about it? What can we do about it? Mm. So we need to go 
near this number and then make a small fix. But what can we do a small fix? Okay, first of all, Mm. Can we do a small fix? So again, we had some little string. Now we have some big string. So for example, let's assume that we This is one less than needed. This is one less than needed. We need to add one. So the ideal situation is we have A, like A, B, B, A, A, B, like this. And we change this to B. The problem is this will not happen all the time. Sometimes there will be only bad things. Can we do something random in this case, or not? I think we can. I think we can. Or not. I hate this problem. I hate this problem so much. Ah, I hate this problem so much. What if we flip two numbers at the same time? Yeah, for example, a, 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 a to zero, and a, 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 b, b, this is one, two, three, four. They can add four sometimes. Окей, okay, let's try some, something random. Uh, так. Uh, void flip int x pair v int Yeah. Ah, also, I don't need to do it. I 
Okay. So I see here that old value const vi div zero and const int n. So I now can flip the number. So if If it is at least cave and break, yeah, and if okay, all we can hope for is bad tests, weak tests. So we say here if min ans dot x i equals min ans dot y i then we continue and otherwise we flip i in min ans Okay, no, I say we have some currents. Equals minutes. Also, I need set int of div with Div with min, div with max. So if for ans dot y is not k. We need to fix it somehow. Okay, we make two sets. We say that for int. Okay, we say for int equals i less than 10 plus plus i and we do something very strange. We do some procedure ten times. First of all, we make it near the correct answer. So if it is equal to k, then break. Okay. Even I can say if ups of this minus k is less than 3, then break. So if cur ans less than maybe even 2. If cur ans dot y is greater than k, then I need to use minimum answer so if currents exceed i equals min ans xi then continue else if it is equal to min then continue and then i need to flip i in currents okay now 
if currents equals k, then break. And if here currents dot y equals k, then I do this. Else I say that it is not possible. And here I do this. Okay. If it is still not this, then I I just take all indices. Okay, no, I need to take the i indices of size n. Then I need to shuffle. Then I need to for int e from int. Okay. And I do it many, many, many times. Okay, here I do 10. Random attempts. So if pure ans dot y equals k, then I say break. And here also, if for ans equals k, then break. And then I flip random bit. I flip random bit, which is sec of RNG for ans div zero n. Okay, I need to remove stress. Okay, now it says no, and this is fine. What about here? Oh, four times no, it's very bad. It's so bad. It's incredibly bad. Why is it no all, all four times? Okay, is it no for like... One... Two... Two A A is it A for it? It is yes, but it is A A. Why is it A A?
if you just created an k, then I need to. So this is vice versa actually. Ah, okay. What? So it says that now it is, oh no, it's release. This is why I cannot understand anything. Ah, it should be currents. Okay, let's try again. Yes, BA. Okay, but why is it false for all these tests? Oh no. I don't have time for this. Ah, this is bad. This is really bad because I do too much shuffling. I, I don't have to do it. I don't get it. I really don't get it. This is some...
This is something that is not nice. Ah, I, maybe I need to add div. Ah, it has already added. Yeah. Oh man. Okay, I I just hate it. Bad contest. Bad contest. But okay, bad contests happen. Oh man, this is awful. This was just awful. Oh man. Shame on me, shame on me, shame on me. I still don't know how to solve problem A, guys. What is it? I guess I need to make some sort of editorial, but I don't know the solution of prob the solutions of problems. I just cannot tell you anything. This is so such a dumb editorial from me. Oh man, it was so oh. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think in Div 2 there was this strange problem. Did people solve it a lot? Guys. Guys, but it is... Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> he solved A and B and then he solved C, D, E. Do people solve problems see that easy? What is it? Oh. Okay, I need to solve it. I need to solve it. I guess we will not get uh, the editorial. Right now.
Yes. Yes. <laughs> what is the solution of this problem? Ah, we can see, we, we, we can look now, we, we can look other solutions. Can't we? Let's see the solution by tourist. Oh man. My... <laughs> what was it? <laughs> I'm now in bad mood. Binary search? Yes, we read the array. What? What? Stop what? K minus minus yes. So, actually, do we need to go from the end to the beginning? Okay, a tutorial of problem A. We want to find the minimum number after k iterations. After zero iterations, x is 1 because we didn't throw anything. Okay, assume that we know for some k and we want to calculate for k plus 1. What do we do? We say that we have k plus 1 operations and we can represent them as as first operation and then k operations. Yeah? So we know how the array looks like after the first iteration. It is just all the integers. But some numbers are removed. Yeah, like a first, a second, etc., a nth, they are removed, they are not here. And after that, we apply these k iterations. So actually, the answer is the xth number among these numbers. So again, let, let, let me explain it more thoroughly. Actually, we don't need to, we need to. Uh, designate make designation x x k is minimum number after k iterations. So x zero is one because we didn't make any operations. We have all positive integers. Now tourist says that x k plus first is xk number of positive integers with all these numbers removed. Okay? Why is it so? Because actually we can apply this so, if we apply these k iterations on all natural numbers, we get xk. But if we 
do it on not on natural numbers but on some set we get x kth number of this set because actually in this problem we do not it doesn't matter the values of the numbers themselves only their order matters so if we have numbers for example not one two three four five six but for example two four six eight ten twelve etc it doesn't change anything the answer is just doubles yeah because for example if the fifth number was five now it is ten it is the only thing that matters which number what number is on the i position for each i so actually we apply the first iteration we have some set it is almost n but with some numbers removed and we take xkth number of this uh, set we can actually implement this it's kind of said that uh, okay let me just let, let me just save it here i will comment it i'm not sure i will so someday I've solved this because I don't like this problem very much. Okay. What a shame. We read numbers number and numbers n and k. Or we consider all a's and we keep track of this number x which is actually long long okay okay So we consider k numbers and we need to change x to something new how do we do it we need to put in the x x number of n minus uh, set a how do we do it we make some function which finds this number. Okay. We say x equals x number of a. Let's write this function x number. And also LLX. And we're in the end print x. And as tourist says, we do it by binary search. We do it via. I can even make uh, the font bigger because why not? We can make it via binary search. So, what is the x number? It is definitely at least x, and it is definitely at most uh, the product of. n and k yeah it is what is it it is at most n times k plus one so like 10 to the level 10 to the 11th is enough so while we are not sure which what is the answer we find The arithmetic mean and we want to check whether this number is deleted yeah not if it is deleted but but what let me think so like it should be x number of this set what is 
x number of some set. It is minimum x such that number of y's from this set which are less than x Minimum set. Minimum z such that number of y's less than this z less than, than this z. At most this z. Is at least x. Yeah, so we need to find the number of numbers in the set which is which are at most c okay let me call this middle c yeah so we check if this c is okay in this uh, condition does it satisfy this condition so let's calculate the number of y's which are not in s and at most c. The numbers that are not in in this set are just a. So we need to calculate. Let me rewrite it. Okay, so we need number of y's such that y in s and y plus c. And we need to check if it is at least x. Let's rewrite it. It is the number of y's which are not in A and which are at most C. Yeah, because A is just the complement of the S. And now it is straightforward to see that number of the such numbers is Z minus number of y's which are actually in A and it was C. Okay, so now we need to find the number of numbers which are at most Z. This can be done via upper bound. So we need upper bound of whole A And and what is the value? I would like to put x, but actually this is not good because they are of different types. Yeah, because x is long long and a is not a long long. A is ints. So we need put here something like minimum long long of x and like one dot one in nine because this is definitely more than all a's so now we found the number of numbers So if these are numbers which are at most C, then we found an iterator which is here. So if we subtract a dot begin, we find this uh, amount. Great. Now we need to subtract z minus this and compare it with uh, x. Let's do it this way. Okay, what if it is true? 
if it is true, then it is a good Z. Yeah, we just need, it is a good Z, we just need to find the minimum of such Z's. So, if this is true, this is a good Z, and we just take most equals middle Z. Otherwise, this is a bad Z. And the answer should be at least middle Z plus 1. And then we return this. Okay, maybe this works. Let's check. 391. Today I am a good coder. And I. Okay, let's make it simple. I will just add the test where I have only one number, two. Still? Okay. Let's see. We have only one number, two. And we want to check middle Z. Is it okay? No, 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 no. At least X. It should be at least X. It should be at least X. What's wrong now? Why? What are you doing? Okay, but why so slow? And still the answer is not good. Okay. Okay. Let's just consider one test. This one. We need to get 9, and of course we get 2. Let's see why is it so. Okay, at some moment it will get to like something like 9-ish, and it will say that it is not a good answer. Let's see when it says 8, for example, or 8 or less. Oh, 6. I am even too late because middle Z should be 6, but okay. Middle Z equals 3. So I want to say that middle Z equals 3 is okay, and it says that not.
Why x is 1? x should be 5. Ah, x! Wait, what? Wait, what? Dude. Dude, what? Dude. It should be three. Why two? It should be three. Okay, it will say that three is a good answer, but why will it say that two is a bad answer? P2. Minus one is at least one. Let's see. I need first number of S. So minimum number Z. Such that numbers less than equal to Z is at least X. So z minus this number should be at least x. This should be the number of numbers which are at most z. It should be 2 because there are 1 and 2. Ah, because it should be middle z. Middle Z. Yeah? Should be middle Z. Okay. Okay, fine. What now? Ah, it's just slow because of debug. 139, 112, 874, 16, 18. Okay. I really should have solved this problem. Oh yes. While system testing, I cannot absolve. Guys, why every time that I go up, something like this should show up and eat my soul what was it guys it's problem a what happened problem a i really just couldn't solve it maybe i hate some max problems and that's that's the problem. Oh, I should have just inverted the problem. So, like, originally I think that we make the first iteration, then we make the second iteration, then the third one, the fourth one, etc. In this problem, you can solve it by applying a method. You add the operations not in the front of each other, but in the back of each other. So you made k iterations, and the next one you put it in the beginning and see what changes. Actually, it is a good technique and it helps here. I didn't notice. It's because usually problem A is just... It's, it's much easier. Let me show you some problem A. Okay, at random, because I don't want... Okay, for example, okay, I need some separate diff1 number, a uh, diff1 contest. Okay, problem A. Ah, there were 
hard and easy problem. Okay, la uh, sorry, I'm lazy to do it. But usually problem A is very easy, it's just straightforward and now actually it needed some idea, I guess. I didn't expect it. And problem D ate my soul. Problem B. Actually, I explained it during the contest. But I will explain it again. So first of all, they say that array B is imbalanced. There are several conditions. First of all, its size is, is n, and uh, there are no zeros, and all numbers are between minus n and n. So all the options you have are the following, minus n, minus... I really cannot undo what I did. It is said minus n minus n minus one etc minus three minus two minus one one two three etc n minus one and n these are all the numbers you can use also they say that b i plus b j should not equal zero so you can take both three and minus three for example and knowing that Also, you know, for each number bi, you know, number ai of such indices j such that the sum is positive. Okay. So, let's solve this problem. First of all, I was solving it wrongly, but actually this was kind of right approach, so I will explain it to you. Let's consider these sets. Okay? By, according to the statement, you cannot take both numbers minus n and n from this set, etc. You cannot take both numbers from uh, the same set. I kind of misread it, and I thought that actually you cannot even take b two times minus n, but you can. You can take two times minus n. But I, while I was solving this problem, I assumed that you, that you can't. So since you're... Okay, let me write it here. So write... Oh, let me designate Sn, Sn minus 1, Sn minus 2, S first. Cannot take both numbers from sk and i read it wrong cannot take at least two numbers from sk this are different because in this case you can take two numbers, but they are not both. They are the same number. First of all, we will solve it in the wrong statement. Okay, in this case, actually, you can you, you have to take exactly one number from each of these uh, sets. Because you have n numbers and n sets. Okay. Let's understand whether we took n or minus n. How can we check it? Assume that we have taken n. 
in this case, if we substitute here n, then it will be positive with any other number. Absolutely any other number. Okay? So with this one, this one, this one, any number, if you sum it with n, you get positive number. Great. What if you have minus n? In this case, you do not have n. In this case, you cannot have such a bi, which is positive with in sum with every other number. Assume you have some number u, which is positive in sum with every number. But if you add here minus n, it will not be positive. It will be negative. Yeah, because in order for it to be positive, u should be greater than n, but you do not have such numbers. So you can easily discriminate between cases n and minus n. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to uh, reduce this problem to this sub-problem. We want to fully remove numbers minus n and n. How can we do it? If we have number minus n, it doesn't change everything, anything, because it just cannot make any positive sums. So if you just remove it completely, neither of these AIs changes. How can it change? It can change if the number of positive sums changes, but minus n cannot uh, occur in any positive sums. So if you just remove it and all AI stay the same, you just remove one zero, which corresponds to this minus n from AI and this works. Uh, in case of n, it is a bit more trickier because uh, when you remove this number n, you decrement all the all these AIs by one. Yeah, so if you have some data structure which can uh, subtract one from all numbers, this would be enough. But actually, you do not need any data structures because every time you uh, subtract one, you subtract it from all the numbers. Not from sub -sub segment or from some sub subset. You subtract it from all numbers. So you can just have a deck. Yeah. And you look. If you have number zero, this means that you have minus n and you just remove it. If you do not have a zero, but you have an n here, you can also remove it. And you add one to some special number d, which means subtract d from all numbers. So when you look into this array, you actually need to subtract d from the number. So let me write it. Assume that this array is a. So if a0 is d, this means that it is actually 0. It is d, but we need to subtract d all the time from this array to see the actual values. In this case, we need to pop front from this deck. Otherwise, let's, let's look at the last number. If it is equal to n plus d, then we need to pop back. And also we need to increment d, because now when we remove this number, each number in our set loses one friend with which all sums are positive. So if neither of these two cases is true, it means that we have a problem. We have a problem because uh, we have a contradiction. There is no number n and there is no number minus n. This is a problem because, as I said earlier, you have exactly one number from each of these SIs. And if there is no contradiction, then 
Yeah, it's, it's fine. But how can we uh, find the answer? If these uh, AIs were sorted, it will be just nice. Yeah, so we have some Bs. We have corresponding A's. And we uh, maintain the A the same way as B. So if we pop back, for example, B. Actually, it should be like... Uh, we have I here. Yeah, so here, for I, like from zero, I less than N, plus plus I. And actually, the current number of numbers is not N. It is N minus I. So you should keep that in mind. So if you pop back B, you actually need to put in the corresponding element of A, N, or N minus if you pop front B, you need to put here 0. Or maybe D or something like this. Okay, you just maintain A the same way as you pop back or pop front from B. But it is only if A is sort, uh, if B is sort sorted. A or B? Let me think. If, it is, if A is sorted, then this works. It, it is other way, actually. You pop back or pop front from A, and in B you write the answer. Is it true? Yes. Yes, you pay, pop back or pop front from A, and in B you store the answer. Yeah, just minimums and, and maximums. I, I can show you my... Solution. It's really not that hard. Yeah, so you have a deck. W. V is just A. And you do it from left or from right side. The problem is the array A is not necessarily sorted in the beginning. And this means that you need to renumerate the array. So let's for now assume that it is sorted, and in the end we will change the order. This is usually done with pair sort. So assume that V is that vector of A's. Let's make it not vector of ints, but vector of pairs of ints. Each int from A gets its index, and we will sort these pairs, A's with indices. So now W is a deck which is sorted. And now we do what I said. So first of all, we check the last number. If it is N minus I, to subtract is the number D uh, which I told you about. So if the back element is good, then the answer is updated with number n minus i, which is the maximum possible number. If vice versa, the first element is good because it is zero, then we use the minimum possible number. And otherwise we say that it didn't work out. So as I said, you put it in the corresponding element of B, but it is easy if A is sorted. If A is not sorted, you do not put it in ith element of n minus ith element. You should look into the second element of this pair. So this element, second element of this pair, it contains the real actual number of element vi in the initial array. And i is the number of element where you need to put the answer. The other way could be that you just put it in the same way, in the same element. And in the end you uh, make a permutation of this 
array, but it is not easier. It is like the same, but with an extra cycle. Yet. Okay. As I said, as I mentioned, this only works if in each of these sets you have at most one number. You cannot have two equal numbers. I noticed it during the contest, but it turned out that it didn't change the solution. This is because if you have a solution with right understanding, then you also have the solution with wrong understanding. And if you have the solution with the wrong understanding, you also have the solution with right understanding. Let's prove both arrows. If you cannot take at least two numbers from SK, you actually cannot take both numbers. So this is straightforward. Any solution from wrong perspective also works from right perspective. This arrow is a bit trickier. So assume that you have some solution where you have several times, for example, n or something else. What I said during the contest is you can expand the solution. Yeah, for example, let's the solution be 2 minus 1, 3, 3, 3, 4, minus 5. This solution is now bad because it has the same absolute value multiple times. Imagine that this number 3 pushes the array in one of the sides. It cannot push it in the left side because 2 and 1 are already full and you cannot put there another number. But in the right direction it is not full. So let's do it. 2 minus 1, 3, 3. And now one of the 3's becomes 4. And it pushes all the other numbers. So 4 now becomes 5. And minus 5 becomes minus, minus 6. And we can do it again. 3, 4, this 3, uh, since it becomes 4, it pushes this 4 to be 5, this 5 to be 6, and this minus 6 to be minus 7. And notice that actually none of the positivities changed. None of the positivities changed. Yeah, because you see, if you have, don't, do not have numbers like minus a and a, the positivity cannot be changed because it only depends on the signs of the numbers. Let me write it. a plus b. Okay, let me write it. Assume that a is not equal to minus b. Then a plus b greater than 0 only. Assume that a is not equal to minus b and a is not 0 and b is not 0 also. Then a plus b equal greater than 0 only depends on the difference between these modules, uh, between these absolute values, and on science of A and B. Yeah, because I can just uh, explain this uh, condition in terms of the difference between absolute values and on science. Look, if both numbers are positive, then their sum is positive. If both numbers is, are negative, then the sum is negative. If number A has greater absolute value than number B, then A plus B is positive if A is positive. And if absolute value of A is less than absolute value of B, then A plus B is positive if B is positive. I could write it, but you can 
roll back and listen again if you want. I just explained this condition and I didn't use the exact values of A and B. I only used their signs and their absolute values, how they are compared between each other. Okay, so this push operation doesn't change neither signs of any numbers or the result of comparison this. It only could change the result of this comparison between these threes, but it doesn't matter because they are the same sign. When they are the same sign, it doesn't even depend on this. So this push operation lets us make all the numbers with different absolute values. So we can assume that they are different absolute values. Hope this was understandable. So actually, I solved the wrong problem, but I was lucky and the wrong problem had exactly the same solution as the right problem. Problem C. Final standings. Yeah, this is sad. This is sad, guys. I don't want to look at this. Maybe we will look at uh, problem D. But mood is otherwise. Oh, I was explaining this problem for so long during the contest. But okay, I will explain it really fast. Boulders and octopuses. Mathematical statement. You have several residues modulo k. During one operation, you can choose some segment of these numbers and add one to it. No, subtract one from it. Modulo k. So if it was 1, it goes to 0. If it was 0, it goes to k minus 1, etc. You need to find the minimum number of operations to make all the numbers zeros. This is the mathematical statement. How to solve it? Let us add, consider differences. Let's consider array B, which looks like this. B i is a i minus a my i i minus like this actually. Okay. First of all, let's make it zero indexed because I don't like it when it's one indexed. And in this case, B is like this. Yes, so. No, no, sorry. It is not like this. It's AI. Still, it's AI minus AI minus first. You can ask me. But what if I equals zero? In this case, this number doesn't exist. Yeah, the tricky part is to extend this array with two fake num fake numbers. You add number a minus first, which is zero, and you add number a n, which is zero. <laughs> let me make an example. For example, let a be two, three, three, and k equals four. First of all, 
heal extended. So now a prime is the following minus first element zero, zero element is two, first element is three, second element is three. Can you hear me? I hope. I hope everything was audible because if it, it if it wasn't then the video is doomed. Put it here maybe. And the third element is again zero. It, uh, these two zeros are fake elements. And then I say that vector b is calculated via this formula. So the zeroth element is the difference between 2 and 0, so it is 2. The first element is 3 minus 2, so 1. The second element is 0, and the third element is 0 minus 3 modulo k, so it is again 1. Okay? Interesting thing is, as you might have learned from Peltarator's course, you can easily find sums of these, <clears throat> sum of subsegments of this array. For example, this should be equal to like AR minus 1 minus b l minus 1. So, sums of consecutive elements of array b correspond to differences between elements of a prime. Sorry, here should be a prime. Okay. Now, let's see what happens within an operation. When you make an operation, Actually, almost no differences change. For example, the differences, okay, let this be an array A or even A prime. So these are always zeros because they never change to, during the operations. Uh, you choose some such segment and these differences don't change. Also, these differences don't change. Yeah, because all these numbers are decremented and these differences don't change. There are only two difference, differences that could have changed and they will change. The first one is this one and the second one is this one. Yeah. So in terms of B, you decrement some number and you increment some number which is to the right from the left one. So now the problem is as follows. You have several numbers B, some residues modulo K. Also, let me apply this one more time and let's calculate A nth minus A minus first. On the one hand, it is just 0 minus 0, because these both elements are fake elements. On the other hand, this is the sum of all elements in this array. So it's like b0 plus etc plus bn. So you have just now acknowledged that the sum of all elements is 0. Or in terms of divisibility, because when I said that it is 0, I said it in the ring of residues modulo k. In terms of divisibility, the sum of all elements is divisible by k. So now we know that the sum of all elements of array is divisible by k. I think in European tradition, sorry, in European tradition I should write something like this, sorry. But uh, <laughs> in Russian tradition, you write like this. This like is taught in school. In schools. 
okay, the sum of all elements, elements is divisible by k, and you can decrement some number a and increment some number j where i is less than j. Find the minimum number of such operations to make all numbers zeros. Why you need to make all numbers zeros? This is because you want all these numbers to be divisible by k. And in order to do it, you need to make all these differences zeros. And also you need to make zero the differences between this number and the fake number, which is also zero from the beginning to the ending. And this zero. So you need to make all numbers zeros. The funny part is you can make all numbers but one zeros. Because since the sum is divisible by k, and it will always be divisible by k, this uh, remaining element will be zero automatically. So you cannot actually make all elements but one zero, and this last element will not be zero. You cannot do that. It will be zero automatically. So you have uh, such an array, you have such operations, and you need to make the all elements zeros in minimum number of operations. <sighs> this was actually quite hard for me. But I made several observations. The first observation is as follows. Let me think. First of all, you never want some number to be subtracted one and added one. And this is because you could remove these both operations. Yeah, for example, this is the first operation and this is the second operation. You could as well make just one operation with these two numbers. Because this is faster. You just do not use two operations, you use one operation. You do not use this intermediate element. So this is the first operation. Each element either increments several times or decrements several times, or you just don't touch it at all. The second observation is if some elements at some moment reaches zero, or it is zero in the beginning, then you do not touch it till the end of the game. Why is that? Assume that at some mo moment you have a zero element. Okay, since in the end it will also be zero, the number of operations is divisible by k. Yeah, you either add one, some number which is divisible by k, or subtract one, some number which is divisible by k. Assume, for example, that you add ones. Yeah, so you make several operations in which this zero is added one. What if you move this element to one position to the left? Actually, nothing changes. All these numbers are decremented the same number of times. This zero still remains zero because you just removed k operations of adding one. And these operations are added to some other element. And this element still doesn't change because the order of the operation doesn't matter. And this element just gets plus k to its value. And since we are in the ring of residues modulo k, this element also doesn't change. So you can do it until you bump into this element. So you have something like this operation. You subtract one and you add one to the same element. Minus one and add one to the same element. But 
we can have some economy, we can remove this separation because it also doesn't change anything. It subtracts one and adds one to the same element. You can just remove it completely. So if you see that some zero was changed, this means that this is not an optimal solution. Okay. So now we have the following structure. We have several residues. Yeah. And you and either resi uh, the residue is already zero or you subtract it several times at the, until it gets zero. All you increment it several times until it gets k. And then goes to zero because of the residual nature of our problem. So now you just need to ch ch choose which numbers will go to zero down and which will go up to the zero. This is all you need to do. At first, I solved this incorrectly. I assumed, let's just, for each element, choose greedily. So if it is nearer to zero, then it goes to zero. If it is nearer to k, it goes to k. And we can choose greedily. Of, of course, since you have minus one and plus one, the overall sum doesn't change. Yeah. So in the end, there will be several zeros and several k's. And you just do it. So that the sum of k's is same as the sum of the array b in the beginning of this uh, process. This is wrong approach because you cannot make such operation. Plus one from the left and minus one from the right. Let me illustrate this on array b equals one four. Yeah. In this case, you can subtract one here and add one here and you get two zeros if k equals five. So we are modulo five. But in this array, you cannot do it. You cannot add one here and subtract one here. So while here the optimum was one operation, here it is four operations it was because the the best that you can do is you can subtract one four times and add one four times so the order matters a lot in this problem this is sad this what's sad for me you can look at it like something proper bracket sequence Ishly, because every time you have to maintain some process where it matters what was left and what was right, and you make some operation operations in pairs, it may remind uh, or reminisce reminisce. Yes, remind you of proper bracket sequences. Actually, I can reformulate you this problem in terms of bracket sequences as follows. You have numbers B1, B0, etc., B, N. You can either make B0 opening uh, brackets or k minus b0 closing brackets. You can, you should choose them in such a way that the resulting sequence is proper bracket sequence. I won't prove you why this is true, but you can easily prove it yourself by finding the pairs. So for each bracket, you find the corresponding closing bracket. And these will be the operations that you do. The opening bracket will be the position of minus one and the closing bracket will be the position of plus one. If you do it, you will easily see that these both problems are just the same.
So I will solve this problem with brackets. Okay, again, each element you can either replace with P0 or BI, sorry, BI, BI opening square uh, brackets or K minus BI closing brackets. And you need to make this choice in order to make a proper, a balanced, I think, or proper, yeah, uh, bracket sequence. And you need to minimize the total number of opening brackets. And like in the problem A, you need to, to apply the going from the end approach. So I wasn't able to think of it in the problem A, but I was, pro was able to think of it in problem C. So let's start from the beginning. And now, and then you will see that from the end it works better. So the first element, of course, you need to take B0 opening brackets. You cannot take K minus B0 closed brackets because it will in the beginning fail the property of being proper. So you make some opening brackets. The B1, it depends on the number of these brackets. For example, if it is, if you, if the number of closing brackets, for example, is five, then you cannot make a proper sequence with closing brackets, and you still, again, need to op make an open sequence. And you go, go, go until you have finally some bi, which is possible to make closed. So now, from this moment, we need to choose some element, actually any element can be chosen, and make it closed brackets. Any of these elements now can be chosen, and the, uh, and the sequence will be non-negatively balanced. It means that on every prefix, the number of opening brackets will be at least the number of closing brackets. If you just change any one element of this to the closing brackets. The problem is we still don't know which one of these to choose. And actually the greedy approach works and you need to choose the maximum residue to be the closing brackets. Yeah, for example, assume that K equals five. Then it's better to make four, just one closing bracket. It's bad to change one to four closing brackets. So it's intuitively obvious that you need to make little numbers opening brackets and big numbers to make them closing brackets. And this works. You need to choose the maximum number. But then you bump into a problem. Now we continue to do it and we do not know what to do next. For example, bi plus first, you still see that the sum of on this prefix is big and you need to make some closing brackets. But if you just put it here, it may violate this sum. Yeah. So for example, if you make these brackets closing, uh, then this prefix is okay. It is not negative. But this prefix, which was constructed previously, it is now broken. Okay, so actually you can, before drawing any brackets, you can find these borders. The first border is actually here. Uh, this border means that the first closing brackets, the, uh, the first black dot should be after this line. And the second black dot should be after this line. And the third uh, black dot should be after this line. And the fourth should be after this line. They all can be after all these lines. 
but they can as well be the first after the first line, the second after the second line, the third after the, th after the third line. You can easily calculate this. How? Where is the position of the line? So you just take these elements as opening brackets, for example, BL. And now you say that you want X black dots. This means that this uh, sum will be subtracted KX. If this is less than zero, it means that it is bad. What means that it is bad? It means that in the first L plus one, this is L plus one, in first L plus one elements, you cannot choose X black dots because it will lead to improper sequence. Uh, conversely, if it is at least zero, then you can have X black dots in the first L plus one elements. As I said, the problem is it is hard to do from the left because when you choose the black dot for, for the first line, you still don't know what will happen to the other lines. The solution is to consider these lines, which are found by this inequality, from the right to the left. So uh, let's find the rightmost line. Yeah, it's like you find such a position that to the left from it, yeah, so here. Okay, assume that the total number of black dots is x that you need to put. x is easily calculated as total sum divided by k. This is the number of dots, yeah, because you need the sum to be zero, but now it is equal to this number. And each black dot, as black dot, I refer to changing opening brackets to closing ones. Bi opening brackets to k minus bi closing ones. Each black dot reduces the balance by k. So if you want the balance to be zero, you need sum over k black dots. So you need the, the rightmost line, it positioned in such a way that <clears throat> Let me write. Rightmost line in such a way that sum to the left of this line is at least x minus 1k. This means it is okay to put all the black dots to the left of this line, but the last one cannot be to the left of this line. It should be to the right of this line. Okay, so this line is actually kind of independent from the other ones. So if you just choose the maximum to the right of this line, it will tot it will. Uh, I mean, this line, uh, this maximum. Okay, I'm starting to confuse myself. This is because this kind of hard problem. And I haven't thought a lot about how to explain it. Hmm, let me think. Okay. Let me reformulate it for a at first. So, again, 
Assume that you already have, first of all, B0 opening squares, then B1 opening squares, B2 opening squares, etc. Bn opening squares. So the problem is to add k closing brackets to some of these places. And after this addition, the sequence should become proper. You might understand that adding bi opening brackets and k closing brackets is equivalent to just having k minus bi closing brackets. But still, I will reformulate in this way. So again, you have several groups of opening brackets of sizes b0, b1, b2, etc, bn. You need to add in some of these places k closing brackets in such a way that the resulting sequence is proper. Yeah. And you should minimize the sum of sizes of opening brackets after which, after which this is not added. You should, let me write, minimize sum of bi where after i we didn't add closing brackets. Okay. Now it will be a bit easier. So again, let me look into my solution after that. Okay. So let's again understand where we can put these groups. For example, the first group of case. Where can it be put? If you put so if you put the first group after bi, this means that b0 plus etc plus bi is at least k, because otherwise the sequence will be improper. And this is sufficient condition. So if this sum is at least k, then indeed you can put closing brackets after bi. So what about the second sequence? So if you put clo second closing brackets after bi, it should be that b0 plus etc plus bi at least 2k. Why is that? Because let's consider this prefix with uh, this second block. Notice that there is also somewhere first block. So if you want this to be proper, you need the number of opening brackets to be at least the number of closing brackets in this uh, prefix. And that is why this is true. And you can also generalize this and say i here and i here. So i group of brackets should have at least i k opening brackets before this group.
Yeah, so there are, like, again, if the number of opening brackets is b0 plus etc plus bn equals sum, then the number of groups, yeah, the number of closing brackets should be also be sum, and the number of groups, green groups, equals sum over k. Yeah, because each group consists of k closing brackets. So you have k group. You have okay. Let be, let it be g. You have g groups, and for each group you have some constraint that it should be at least somewhat right. For example, the first group should be right enough so that the sum here is at least k, and the second group should be right enough so that the sum here is at least two k, and etc. You can draw these lines easily. These lines again means uh, mean that. So this is the first line. This is the second line. The third line. The gth line. Ith line means that uh, ith group of uh, closing brackets can be anywhere to the right of this line. The problem that I mentioned is that if you know that after the first line you should choose some maximum, yeah, which will be the closing brackets. Maybe this maximum corresponds to some other line. And maybe not. You still don't know. And this means that you still don't know whether you need to choose something from here, for example. Yeah? So, for example, assume that optimum answer, answer is to the first line, we uh, have this first group, this is the second group, and this is the third group. But when you looked into this structure, you understood that this is the global maximum, and you just need to correspond like this. And to the second you corresponded like this, and to the third you corresponded something else. But this is an inoptimal because you never chose this element. And this is because of the wrong order of choosing. Actually, the right way is to consider these groups from right to left. So, if you see this line, the rightmost line, the gth line, this means that the rightmost group of brackets should be somewhere after this line. And you just choose the maximum element to the right of this line. Maximum element. Notice that you might assume that this maximum corresponds to this group, because if it corresponds to something else, then there is still something that corresponds to G, and you can swap them. So now G corresponds to this maximum, and these other elements correspond to that far, farther line, or further. So, you go from right to left, uh, and you choose maximum unchosen bi to the right of gth line. This can be done via priority queue. Priority queue is something that can 
store multi set of numbers and give you the maximum of them and pop it to words. So you do it greedily, but you consider the right order, starting with the right groups and ending with the left groups. And doing so, you get the optimum. See how I do it. I take the priority queue. I go from the right to left. SR is the sum of some right elements. This is the sum of left elements, and this is the sum of left elements minus the total number of expected closing brackets. And if it is less than zero, this means that I have a line here. Yeah, because I cannot put all the brackets to the left of this line because it will uh, violate the proper property of the uh, brackets. Yeah, you see, you I have so many opening brackets and so many closed brackets. If this is less than zero, this means I cannot have all these uh, closing brackets to the left of this line. So actually, this i is the line number soups. Soups is the number of already put groups. In this case, I say that q maximum element will get the closing brackets. I q dot pop and increase the soups. So now I consider the next group. Yeah, in the end, I just sum up all the numbers in q which are still not taken. And these are, this is the answer actually. This is unpaired bi's. <sighs> okay, I guess this video will be boring if we do not consider at least problem D. At first I will try to absolve problem A. Why? Because this is div2. Accepted. As you see, my editorial was right. A problem D. Solve the samples for all k. I don't want. There are not many intervals of possible k. Yeah, as I understood, there is one big interval, and in two exclusions, there are two intervals. Construct the answer with dynamic programming. Ah, oh no.
Okay. You can watch the stream, but I <laughs> I don't like this problem, sorry guys. They kinda say <sighs> Maybe I just don't like DP problems. Okay, what they say is that Sorry, it's lagging. What they say is that uh, for fixed string, the set of possible case is either minimum maximum or sometimes minimum maximum minus two and maximum. Or sometimes minimum and from minimum plus two to maximum. And this is only in case of the initial string being alternating. And this is also in case of the initial string be monochromic. I cannot prove it to you. And I won't because it is boring. But let's assume that we believe in it. Also, minimum and maximum can be found via dynamic programming as I did during the contest. You just cut it somewhere. You store the minimum or maximum answer if there is A here or B here. And you consider what happens next when you add the next element. It somehow changes. Yeah. Ah. Okay, maybe get get it. So, since this is quite easy, as you see, yeah, the structure of this thing is quite easy. You just can in this dynamic programming store this segment, yeah, because you just need to st store minimum, store maximum, and sometimes you need to store whether this element is broken, in case of these two things. Okay, assuming that you just need to find maximum, how do you find the answer? Yeah? So, again, assuming that you calculated dp, like n c maximum in first n elements, last is c. So assuming that you calculated this dp, maximum number of differing neighboring elements, in case that you consider only first n elements and you take the last of them c. How to find the string which gives you this maximum? You go from the end to the beginning and you ask, can I put here a? If dp and a is same as this maximum, then you can do it, and you do it. But if you, dp is different, then you have to use b. Okay, now, assuming that you used b, let's now consider this thing. Can we put a here? If we put a here, the answer will be dp n minus 1 a, and also plus 1 because of this thing. And you compare this answer to your actual current answer. If they are equal, you can take A. If they are not equal, you have to take B. Etc. You go from the right to left and uh, recover the answer. Now, 
in case of this thing, your DP is not a number or not two numbers. It's like two numbers and actually it's just set. You can think of it as set, which is stored in some uh, compressed manner. Yeah, so you just know either a segment or for maybe, for example, two segments. Okay. And this actually works pretty well with these segments, yeah, because, for example, if you have A, A, B, B, and you added this B, B, then actually for all segments which are achievable here, you should add one to them. You just need to add one to them. So, yes. Now, how can you get the answer? In the same thing, you consider, for example, letter A. You try to put A here. And you ask yourself, if I put A here, will the resulting answer contain the number K? If it contains the number K, you can put A here. If it doesn't contain, you cannot put it. Should we do it? In Visual Studio. I actually don't really want it. Okay. Okay, I think we will do it. We will try. <clears throat> we will try to do it. Okay, I don't need this stress. Okay, let the stress be here. Okay, I don't mind. Actually, this is all... It, this is too much. I don't do not need this. All of this. Because this is a wrong approach. I don't want the stress either. Okay, we read N, K. What do we do then? We need to find some DP. Yes, so DP will be... Uh, the minimum. The maximum. Here also we have type. So type equals zero, then this is just mn mx. If type equals one, then this is mn and mn plus two, etc. mx. And finally, if type is 2, then this is mn, etc. mx minus 2 and mx. So we need a dp which calculates This for all sex, for, for all prefix, prefixes. Okay, let's do it. First of all, I need to make a binary vector because I don't like A's and B's. So the I equals S I equals B. Vector vector sec. Now what do we do? It should be dp of size 2 
sec of size n. I do it because I prefer the little dimensions to be to the left and big dimensions to be to the right. Sometimes it's not proper way, but now I think it's better. So let's cover the initial values. For example, what is dp0,0? Zero, zero? Yeah, it's like we are trying to put 0 or like even dp v0,0. Zero, zero. Means that we put the first element the same as in the string. This means that this is a segment where mn is maybe I need modern C. Yes, I need modern C. Where mn is 0, mx is 0, and type is also 0. And not v0 is the same, but here are ones. Here yeah, now, starting with right. also, I need to store whether my segment is alternating or not. And whether it is same colors or not. Okay. Assume that we are considering a segment. First of all, it is easy to find the type. So if vi is not equal to vi minus first, then same equals false. Else, alter equals false. Now, for int j equals here j less than 2 plus plus j we need to calculate dp uh, ji first of all we say that gp dp ji dot type equals what <coughs> so if <coughs> if alter then definitely uh, minus one is impossible. So this is two. In other case, we check the same. If same, then it is type one or else it is type zero. Actually, we can even make this. Great. Let's continue. Also, let's write contains. So if n is greater than mx, then false. If n is less than mn, also false. If tab equals one, 
and n equals mn plus 1, return false. If type equals 2 and n equals mx minus 1, also false. And otherwise, true. This will be useful later. Okay, now we need to find the minimum and the maximum. We say that dp ji dot maximum equals a very little a little number and minimum equals a very big number. Now we iterate over the previous symbol. And we say that dp ji.mx equals maximum of dp ji.mx plus what? Oh, not plus what? dp kj, oh, i minus 1, plus what? Yeah, we also add vi is not equal to vi minus first. We also add j does not equal k. We also add J does not equal VI. I think this is it. And the same goes for minimum. Yes. Okay, now when we have done this. Actually, we calculated everything. Happy. Now we need to find the answer. Okay, now, first of all, we need to Okay, actually, let me do it via function. So if ans dot empty, and here will be the function. So if answer is empty, we see out, what do we see out, we see out no, otherwise we print yes and the string. Let's go here. <clears throat> so if char last simple also I want to make string symbols equals a b 
Char last, not bull was him, I think. So if TP zero L minus one dot contains K last symbol equals zero. Else if GP one n minus one contains k. When we say last symbol equals one, else we say that return nothing. Then we say that we have a string ans of size n is in sim last symbol. And we then fill the string from the ending to the beginning. Okay, so we need to calculate ans. Okay, we need to bool uh, calculate ans i. So we say bool new symbol. And in the end, we will say that last symbol equals new symbol. And we will say that ans i equals sim of last symbol. And in the end, we will return ans. Okay, how do we do it? We just try zero for in in the beginning. So if what if if dp zero i contains what? So also in current ans, which is equal to k. So let let's see, let's see. For example, we want this to be some other current ans, and here we have some other ans. What will be added if we have zero here? This will be added, this will be added, and this will be added. Let's add this. So first of all... Okay, let's... For, for now, print something like value. Okay, we add... vi not equal to vi plus first. We add... <clears throat> zero does not equal uh, last symbol and we add last symbol does not equal v i plus one okay this is the value it should be equal to k this is what we need to change so we need to subtract all these three things so if it contains it we say that new symbol equals zero else new symbol equals one Let's try it, maybe. Uh, 
Again, four times no. I don't like it. Okay, for, for, for some reason it is always infinite. I don't like it again. Why is it always infinite? Ah, it should be minimal. No, yes, BBBA. Yes, something and no. Is it true? I don't know. I really, I genuinely don't know. Let's, let's, let's check maybe. So I need five differences. Let's check. One, two, three, four. It's four differences. Why five? Why does it say it is five? Ah, oh, I think it should be like this. BBBA? Still, this is kind of bad. Ah, current tons should be reduced. Okay, let's say current ants minus equals this. Okay. Why? Why is it so? <sighs> okay, he, it says that I need A in the end. <clears throat> yes, now it is four. But what 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 then? I don't understand. Why also type is one every time? Ah, I understand why. Why is current tense two? What's what's wrong with it?
Is it really possible to make like answer five with B in the end? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, it's five here. Okay, let's see again what's happening. So last symbol is a it is fine no like b a b a yeah one two three four five yes now it is true and again it is true for, for some reason i don't understand why So now i equals 1, so we are checking this symbol. And it asks whether it can be answer 3. In this segment. 1, 2, 3. It shouldn't be 3, it should be 4. Why is it 3? I should be subtracting only one from the previous step. Oh. Yes, I've subtracted subtracted only one for previous step. It should be 4. Now i equals yes, it should be 4. Ah, K, okay. it should be K, it should be current tense. Yes! Yes, finally! No, yes, Baba, yes, Abba. Ba ba no let's try it oh. why is it wrong answer test two test case 94 Okay Let me say you some I'm kind of tired I I a bit don't think it is possible now Oh Okay, I hate it. Okay, okay. This problem is solvable, just not in this contest. Not not by me. Sorry, guys. I did all my best. But it's past the sample. Thank you for watching. Hope you will write contests better than I today.